is happy. It causes you to love, my God, my God. Mm. And I thank God for Apostle Leo's injury and Pastor Tim's injury for giving me this opportunity to stand before the people tonight and minister the word of God. I do not take it lightly. Hallelujah. I give God glory and praise for this opportunity. Yes. You, 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 you never know. He said, be ye also ready. And it's so funny when Elder Robinson came to me and she said, when you preach Sunday, I was like, hallelujah, praise the Lord. You know, I, I was just excited about being able to minister the word of God, not just in the house, but outside of the house. And I give God glory and praise for that tonight. I thank you all for coming out tonight. You had no idea who was going to be before you tonight. You didn't know whether it was apostle, pastor, minister, elder. But I thank God for you coming out tonight to hear what the Lord has to say to all of us tonight. Hallelujah. God, I thank you, God. I thank you tonight, Father God, for what you placed on the inside of me to speak, Father God. God, I thank you for speaking to me like never before, Father God. I thank you for continuing to anoint me with a fresh anointing, God, from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, God. I thank you for continuing to move me out of the way, Father God, so that you can do what you want to do through me and in me, Father God. I just ask you to have your way tonight, Father. Have your way tonight, God. Do whatever you want to do tonight through me and in me, Father God. God, I thank you for it, my God, Father. And I thank you for the people that might be on their way, Father God. I pray, God, that they may be here safe and sound, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. I pray for the absent part of this body, Father God. That they would get on board, Father God. They would catch the vision and run with the vision. And come into the house on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. And whenever we have service, Father God. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I just ask you to bless Apostle Neil Gentry and Pastor Jim. With all full blessing, bountiful blessing. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, and I thank you that this house is blessed in the name of Jesus. We have everything that we need, more than we need, abundantly above all that we can ask and see, Father God, and we thank you for it tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hallelujah. I'll be coming from Galatia 5. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been reading from verse 16 through 26. Hallelujah. When you have it, say, Bless the Lord. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not, <clears throat> so that you do not do the things of things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the work of the flesh are ever against which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lawfulness, Adultery, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dispensation, hallelujah, rebelleries, and the, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Again, such such there is no law. And those who are and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I was talking to God and asking him what did he want me to speak on, he said, I want you to go to Galatians 5.18. But if you are not, are not led by the Spirit, you are not under the, 
But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Hallelujah. 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 But I'm going to go over some more of the scriptures. So, um, in Galatians 5, 16 through 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Galatians 5, 16. Lift it can this generation into license. But the Holy Spirit enabled us to subdue the lust of the flesh. When, they con contain when, when we continuously submit ourselves to the to his power and control and control, walking in the spirit is an expression that means living one life in the power of the spirit while being guided by the spirit. So there is no way that we can walk in the, in the flesh if we are walking in the spirit. And how do we walk in the spirit? We have to meditate on his word. We have to read his word. We have to get his word deep down in our spirit so that when things come up against us, we don't have to worry about walking in the flesh. We can easily speak the word of God over whatever situation it is because every situation that we go through, every situation that come up against us, God has given us the word to speak over. So that's how we know we're not walking in the flesh. We're walking in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to say it's easy, but the more I grow in the Lord, the easier it gets for me. The more I pray, the more I read his word, the more I have opportunities to minister to other people. I grow in the spirit and when I feel like doing something in the flesh, I can get convicted very easily. Because when you walk in the, in the flesh, actually, we no longer live in the law, but when you begin to walk in the flesh, you live it in the law. That's a dangerous ground to walk in. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 And Galatians 5, 17, the spirit and the flesh are demonically opposed to one another as evidenced by the word and the fruit. You can read 1922. I'm going to read it, but 1922. Also, the early references 429 and 5, 4 through 5, where those who are of the spirit are controlled by, are controlled by those of the flesh and, and the law, in which they cannot be victorious by their own strength. So, and we're walking in the spirit. We won't be controlled by our flesh. We won't be controlled by our mind, but we'll be controlled by the Spirit of God. We'll hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, and we'll do whatever the Spirit of the Lord is telling us to do in that situation, whatever it might be. No matter how hard they come at you, no matter how many lies they tell on you, no matter how they try to deceive you, when you walk into the Spirit of God, you can say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they've done. And this is how God wants us to live. He wants us to live in the spirit. He don't want us to walk in the flesh. Because when you begin to walk in the flesh, you cannot walk in the spirit. You can't do both of them at one time. Because they can turn into each other. The flesh don't like the spirit. And the spirit don't like the flesh. So when you begin to walk in the flesh, you you get in the spirit upset because the spirit is saying, hey, wait a minute. I know they know that. I know they know the word. Why are they getting in the flesh? So you can't do both of them at one time because one contradicts the other. You either going to walk in the spirit or you're going to walk in the flesh. And I don't know about you, I choose to walk in the spirit. I've been there walking in the flesh and it was so terrible. It was a horrible feeling. You had no peace. You had no joy. You put on the front when people come around. Hey, how you doing? Girl, I'm blessed and how to say but know your mind is being tormented by the devil because you've been walking in the flesh all week long. You haven't took a second, not a minute, but you haven't even took a second to pick up your Bible and read one verse. He didn't say you had to read a whole scripture. One verse can get you through the day. Just one verse can get you through the day. But when you fail to read God's word, oh, you're going to be in the flesh all day long. All day long. Everything going to come at you. And you go go back at it. And they call you a liar. I'm not a liar. What are you talking about? You're going to go back in the flesh. 
But when you study God's word and you get God's word deep down in your spirit and deep down in your heart, oh, you're going to speak the word. You're going to speak the word over every situation. Not some of them, but every situation. I've learned to be content in every situation of my life. No matter what you do to me, I'm going to look at you and say, I love you, God bless you. You know, that, and that's where God wants us to be. Not saying that I have all arrived all the way. No, I have not. But I'm learning how to stay in the spirit and not in the flesh. Again, I say, when we walk in the flesh, we're living after the law. And that's dangerous. Because when those people back in the days in the Old Testament, when they lived in the dome, they were slain. They were killed by every wrong thing they did. I thank God for his grace that we are not living in the law. We are living in grace. I thank God for his grace and his mercy. I don't know about you, but I know where I should have been. But because of his mercy, hallelujah, and his grace, I can stand here tonight and speak what he gave me to speak. Hallelujah. 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 Galatians 5, 18. The person who is led by the Spirit will do what is, what is right freely and not by the com compulsion of the law. Thus he is not under the law, bondage and condemnation. So when you walk in the spirit and not in the flesh, therefore there is no condemnation to them that walk with after me, that follow after me. So when you walk in the spirit, you don't have to worry about condemnation. They will try, but they can't do anything to harm you because God don't close their mouth. He don't close their mouth. They're going to begin to see who you really are in the spiritual realm. When you, when you just sit there and look at them and smile and say, bless you. That's when you know you're learning to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because I'm, I'm looking at all these things when we're walking in the flesh. And all of us at one time walked in these things. Some of us walked in them when we were saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost because we was fulfilling our flesh. We walked in all these things. Adultery, fornication, sorcery, anger. We walked in every one of these things. But I thank God for his compassion and his love that if you go on down here and you read, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. When you learn how to walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh, we can walk in these things. But you can't walk in these things in the fullness of it if you're in your flesh. You know, I don't care what nobody can say. You can tell when somebody in their flesh. You know when they're in their flesh. You know. And you just sit there and let them go on. You don't want to hurt their little feelings. So you let them go on and on and on and on. But I came to a point in my life, God told me you can't do that. If they wrong, you got to let them know they're wrong. Because they'll continue. They'll never grow in me. They'll never get to know me. They'll never be able to walk in the spirit. They'll always walk in the flesh. They'll always be condemned. They'll always be lied. They'll always walk in lasciviousness. They'll always walk in lust. They'll always walk in those things that I just read a few minutes ago. So we have to be careful and make sure that we study his word, that we meditate his word, because I don't know about you, but there's been some times in my life that I walked out of the flesh and it wasn't a pretty picture. It wasn't a pretty picture. I wasn't happy. I was happy at that one moment. But after that moment, I wasn't happy anymore. I felt so down. I felt so bad because I knew the word of God. But I decided that I wanted to walk in my flesh. So I'll tell you tonight, Let's not walk in our flesh, but let's walk in the Spirit of God. Let's hear the voice of the Lord. Let's obey His Word. Let's walk in love. Let's walk in peace. Let's walk in kindness. Let's walk in gentleness. Let's walk in meekness. Let's walk in all these things, and we won't have to worry about walking in the flesh. That's all God gave me.